Hi, uh, this is Josh Carr again. Talking about data tables a little bit more, I've done some data table videos before, but for whatever reason, people seem to still have some difficulty with them. I wanted to show you a couple of advanced issues that come up with data tables. So here is, or here are, I should say, a couple data tables. I have a cash flow, money in, money out. I have a couple of assumptions here. In this case, I have a growth rate, which is on the income. And I have a cap rate, which is taking some income in the future and converting it back to a sale price. So again, money in, money out, some sale price. And while in my mind, I'm always thinking about real estate deals, this could really be any investment that you have money in, money out, you know, uh, stocks, whatever, bonds, I don't know, whatever you want to invest in. In any event, I have an internal rate of return calculation. That's pretty straightforward. And a net present value calculation. I've got a discount rate. I've got an NPV. And down here, I've built two data tables. Uh, if you don't know how to build a data table, um, I have other videos about that, but you can read about that under data, what if, data table, right? So in this case, I have one data table that shows as you vary the cap rate and vary the growth rate, what is your internal rate of return? You can see as this changes and this changes, this changes. And I've got one calculating a net present value again as my growth rate and my cap rate change. What happens to this? So I've got two pretty typical two in, two variable one output tables now there are two questions i get the first question i get is someone says i like the fact that you have two data tables but is there a way to condense this that is to say could i vary between table a and table b without actually building two tables uh, you could it's actually pretty simple basically a data table will calculate anything in the upper left-hand corner based on the inputs. So what I could do is I could say, well, instead of calculating the IRR, I could put anything in there. For example, if I wrote the word apple, it would give me 25 apples, right? Anything I put in here, pair, it'll give me. So IRR, right? So this is what I could do. I could do something like this. I could say, I'm going to have a control say the value of one, and I'm going to do a choose function. And if it's the value of one, then I'm going to calculate the IRR. And if it's a value of two, I'm going to calculate the NPV. If I do that, and I don't know if you've used choose functions before, but pretty simple. It just looks at that. And if it's a one, it does this. If it's a two, it does that. You can do a lot more than just two items, but today we'll just do two items because we're doing two. If I do that, if it's a 1, it does the IRR. If it's a 2, it does an NPV. Now, when I do this, it's kind of nice that you can vary from 1 to 2, but I can almost hear you screaming over the Internet, and you're saying, wait a moment. When I vary from 1 to 2, it's messing with the format, right? Like, it's fine that these are, intra these are percentile, but these I don't want to have be percentile. Um, there's a way to deal with that. What I could do is there's a wonderful little beast called a text form function. And that takes what you were doing and it forces the format to be something that we want. So for example, I could do that format and that will convert that into a number or I could just do something like that, and then it's just a number, right? Or you get the idea. A format. And the way I'm coming up with those formats, by the way, is if you've ever custom formatted a cell, you have, you know, these custom formats, right? Custom formats. In any event, that's a custom format. So then what I could do is I could say, well, Instead of doing this, let's do this. And the text function forces the format. So if it's a 1, it's percentile. If it's a 2, it's doing 
the text formula, right? And it's basically taking that number and it's forcing the format. That's what a text function does. It forces the format regardless of the way it would normally present it. And then of course, if I wanted everything to be right aligned, I could just force that under the home tab to right alignment. And now whether or not I do a one or two, there you go, right? And of course, the reason I need to do that is because when you make something text, it's left, al left aligned versus something that's right aligned. Uh, and, you know, problem solved. Now I have a data table that can either do an IRR or an NPV. And of course, I'd also probably here have a choose function that said if that's a 1, then put in the word IRR. And if that's a 2, put in the word NPV. And, you know, there you go. Right? That's pretty neat. Okay, um, that is a more advanced data table. Um, cool. And with that, I'll just basically say I'm good. Uh, if that's the sort of stuff that interests you, you can, of course, go to my website or check out more videos like this or watch the original videos uh, called uh, Data Tables. Um, just look at the videos. I've got three videos that explain that. Excellent. Thank you very much.